lovely English tea garden sponsored by Twinings and to Epcot Flower and Garden Festival which is one of my favourite festivals that we do here in Epcot. I think it's wonderful. I mean how cool are all these topiaries that are around the park? Aren't they beautiful? Perfect. So today we are here to talk about tea. Hopefully this is not a surprise to anybody since you've all signed up to be here but more specifically we're here to talk about Twinings tea. Now as we can see just behind me we've got big 1706 here. That is when the company first started so Twinings has been around for a very long time. When it first opened up, it was as Tom's Coffee House. That's right, coffee, not tea, because back in those days, coffee was the more popular drink, and tea kind of rose to fame, which was when they turned it into Twinings of London Tea Shop, which is still there now. The original store is still there. You can still go and buy things. And it's a very, very small building from the front because they were taxed on the size of the, like, the store fronts rather than the actual dimensions of them. So if you walk through the store now, if you do this, you're probably going to knock all the tea off the wall. So it's a really interesting building to visit if you're in London. It's on the Strand. And yeah, it's definitely worth a trip there. They've got some really interesting flavours of tea in there. Speaking of flavours of tea, Twinings has over 500 different blends, variations, combinations. And we're going to be talking about all of them today. No, we're not. We only have a really small garden. We'd be here for a very, very long time. It's very hot outside. I don't want that. You don't want that. So we picked 12 quite various different ones. We've got black, green, herbal, and a few bonus ones at the end. And if we just look around the garden, these teacups are going to represent our teas that we're going to be speaking about. So with all these teas, the people that are in charge of them are called tea blenders, master tea blenders. Now, there is only nine of these guys. And that is because it's a really, really hard job and they have to train between 15 to 25 years to qualify to do this job. You think tea tasting is a job? That sounds great, right? 700 cups of tea is a lot of tea to drink in a day. I mean, they're not drinking the whole cup of tea, but they are something a bit, a bit like wine tasting. And they are just there to check that every cup of tea is perfect. If you've tried an English breakfast 30 years ago, it should taste exactly the same as that today. And for this reason, Twinings don't own their own plantations. So they go out into the world and they source tea from different places, different countries, different climates, and make sure that they've got the best crop. Because if they had their own plantations and the crops spoil, it rained heavily or there was a drought, all the tea would be ruined. We don't want that. So that's what makes this company really special as well. So they are really, really, really committed to making the best product possible. So without further ado, we're going to be heading up the path just here to our first tea that's just on the promenade over there. And I'm just going to make sure everyone can still hear me because it can be a bit loud up there. So just this way. Do we have any tea drinkers? Anybody drink tea? Lots of hands. Anybody have a favourite tea? Shout them out to me. Mint. Mint? <laughs> Do you like peppermint? Mm -hmm. Oh, we might have one for you later on. Anybody else? Anybody else have a favourite tea? English breakfast. English breakfast. Ironically enough, when we order tea at home, the tea that we expect to be given is English breakfast. But it's a relatively new tea. It's only been around like a hundred years or so. So for that to be the most popular tea or the most well-known tea, it's kind of cool, kind of interesting. My personal favourite is Earl Grey. Does anybody else like Earl Grey? Lots of hands. Good. I know we're all going to look just fine. Have we lost anybody down a rabbit hole today? No, perfect. <laughs> it's not a very far journey, but you know it's treacherous through there. <laughs> so before we start talking about the different teas, does anybody know what tea actually is and where it comes from? It does come from a plant, yeah, so it's part of the camellia family. So if we look just somewhere in the flower bed, we should see our friend Spike the bee with a little camellia planter. Should be back there somewhere, I can't see him from here. Perfect. So. Camellia sinensis is the tea plant, so that is the kind of camellia that tea comes from. Everything that is called tea has got Camellia sinensis in it. Now this plant can be found in the wild and it can grow from anywhere to 32 to 50 feet tall. You need a very long and tall ladder to be able to reach those leaves at the top because what twinings like to do is they like to pluck the top, the very very top leaves to go into the tea so you get your best, the best tea taste if that makes sense. So black tea is 
way I would describe it is it's dark and rich in color because it's oxidized. So that is why it's richer flavor than green teas. So imagine if you have an apple and you cut it in half and you open it up, it's gonna go brown when it's left out in the air. That process is called oxidation. And that's kind of what happens with black teas. Now, first tea that we've got to talk about is our pure black tea, and this is our Prince of Wales. Interesting fact about this tea, we cannot get this at home. It's named after one of our royal family, but we cannot get this at home. I did not know it existed until I moved out here. So this one, there's no extra flavors, no extra flowers or anything added to this. It's just pure black tea. And the tea source for this one it comes from three specific provinces in China. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce those three provinces because I don't want to offend anybody. But where they are grown is on the side of a mountain, so the altitude is perfect. They're not going to get spoilt by the sun and it just means that we get a really, really delicious, rich black tea. So if you wanted to try something that we can't get back in England, this is probably a really good place to start. In terms of black teas, does anybody drink those with milk, with sugar? A few people. See, back home when we drink tea, most people will drink it with milk and sugar, but you guys, quite a lot of you just drink plain black tea on its own. This one's really good with or without milk, so this one's very interesting to try. So we're just gonna move down the garden ever so slightly to our next teacup. Which you guys at the back of the group can probably see is our Earl Grey Lavender. Has anybody tried the lavender version of Earl Grey? Anybody tried it? You have. Yeah, it's, the lavender's not overpoweringly strong in this. It's a really subtle flavour, but it's just a really nice modern twist to a classic. So there's a bit of a fun story behind Earl Grey. So this tea was served to the Earl of Grey. Any shocks there? I hope not. So this guy was the Earl of Grey, but he was also the Prime Minister at the time, and he was served a version of Earl Grey by an envoy who came over to the country, and he tried it and was like, oh my goodness, I need this in my life. So he went to Twinings and said, listen, I've tried this tea, can you try and recreate it for me? So Twinings went away, they brainstormed, and they came up with Earl Grey. So anybody who's tried Earl Grey, can you tell me what the most overpowering flavor of it is? Any suggestions, any ideas? No, so, Earl Grey is a black tea with uh, the bergamot oil in it. So bergamot is the main flavor that you can taste when you taste Earl Grey. It's quite perfumey, it's a very distinctive flavor and smell, but if you find it growing in the wild, do not touch it, do not eat it because it is toxic. So we leave the producing of this to the professionals who know what they're doing. But like I say, this one is my favorite. I absolutely adore Earl Grey, but they made a mistake. They did not paint the blend when they created it. So this is why you see a lot of other companies able to produce their own versions of Earl Grey because we do not own the rights for it. But if you go into the tea caddy and find a box of Earl Grey, if you kind of flip the box around, there'll be a signature on the side of it. And that is from the most current Earl Grey back home to kind of say, we're not the only ones, but we're the original. So that's a fun little, little thing that they added. So we're gonna go from the Earl round to the Lady if we just slip down the garden. So to the sister tea of Earl Grey. Just here. Just gonna squeeze past you too if you don't mind, sweetheart. Thank you so much. So what well, what we've got here is the Lady Grey decaf version. Now we have obviously the caffeinated and the decaffeinated version in the tea caddy, but this one that we've got planted out here is the decaffeinated version. If you're in a bit of a pinch and you only have caffeinated tea bags and you don't want the full force of caffeine to hit you in the face, if you do like a first brew of your tea for like two minutes, it's gonna take most of the caffeine out. It will take most of the colour too, but then if you read through it again, it's going to kind of taste similar. It might be a bit weaker, but there's not going to be any caffeine in that or anywhere near as much. So that's a really good idea if you're like desperate and you don't want, you really want to try this tea before bed, but you don't want to be awake all night. So, so with this one, does anybody who has tried Earl Grey and Lady Grey know the difference between the two? No? So this one is very citrusy. So when people tried Earl Grey, it was very, very strong. It was very, very perfumey. And people were like, mm, I like it, but it's a bit strong. So they went away and came up with this one, which has got oranges and it, it's a lot more fresh. I had not tried this one until very recently. And it, you can still taste the bergamot in there, but it's nowhere near as strong. So if you've not tried this one, it's really, really good one to consider. And it's worth noting that Twinings did not make the same mistake twice. This one is painted, so we are the only company that can sell and produce Lady Grey. So if you wanted to try a tea that's exclusive to Twinings, this is another nice one. Okay, so that is our third black tea on the tour. 
We're just gonna swip round to our last one. So this is our chai French vanilla. Does anybody know what chai means? That's a direct translation of the word. Tea. So if you are ordering a chai tea, what you are really asking for is tea tea. Do with that information what you will. So I love a chai tea, but does anybody know kind of the origins of where it came from and why it became a thing? No, so yes, it is Hindi. So chai is tea in Hindi. Back in the day when they used to brew tea, ages and ages and ages ago they'd make it in big ceramic pots and everybody would kind of share the tea and they would just go along and they would take their bit and they would go home with it but this did mean that the tea was left out for hours and hours and hours and what happens when you leave your tea bag in for too long it's very bitter it's not particularly pleasant and the tea does not taste as it really was supposed to so what they did to combat this was they added the spices the ginger the cloves in there just to kind of make it taste a bit nicer and I think it's delicious. I'm glad that it's still a thing that you can buy now. The one that we've got here is the French vanilla version. So if you did not know, vanilla is the only edible orchid in the world, which was a fact I did not know. I just love vanilla. If, if we could put it in everything, I would vote for that. <laughs> so as well as the French vanilla we have in this collection, we also have a pumpkin spice one, an ultra spice and a spiced apple. Pumpkin spice is a funny one for us back home. It's not really a thing. We don't do pumpkins. We maybe have them at Halloween, we carve them out, and we throw them away. We don't eat or consume pumpkins, but over here, everything is pumpkin spice. I'm starting to be converted, but maybe not in the summer. I think I'm gonna stick to pumpkin spice as a seasonal thing, it is too hot. So another interesting thing about chai, I know people that like it iced, but don't like it hot. So if there's a tea that you really don't like, it might just be worth trying it in different temperatures because it does taste different, even though it's the same tea. And if you are making iced tea, a really fun thing that you can do is make the same kind of tea twice and then fill an ice cube tray and freeze the tea. So then when you are adding ice into the tea, you're not gonna be watering down the tea flavor with the water. So you don't, you don't want watery tea, especially if it's brewed to perfection when it's hot. Perfect, so that is our fourth and final black tea. We're gonna just carry on a bit further down the garden. I'm gonna be talking about green tea next. So we spoke about how black tea is oxidized and that what gives it its dark color and its rich flavor. Green tea, it is pan fried as soon as it's picked and it's dried out so that it keeps its green color and it's still very fresh. This is partially why green tea gets a bad rep for sometimes tasting a bit grassy. But I know green tea is much more popular overall than black tea is. And it's probably because it's got a lot more of a vibrant flavor. And I personally would not add milk to green tea. I don't want to tea shame anybody if you do that, but my personal preference is just to leave it as is. But green tea, you do not need to leave to brew as long as you would do black tea. Black tea, maybe five minutes would be okay. Green tea, about two. So don't ever brew your green tea because it will not taste particularly nice. The one that we've got here is the jasmine green tea. Now this does not have jasmine in it. It's just infused by jasmine. So what that means is tea is very, it's, it's really good at absorbing what is around it. So it's been infused by the jasmine. But this does mean if you have tea in your cupboards at home, it should be in something that is airtight because otherwise if you put it next to your herbs and spices, you're gonna receive a chai tea that maybe was not intended to be that way. So yes, and for this reason, tea is also really good at taking really bad odors out of shoes. Pop a tea bag in each show after you've been on a long park day. Try it, you, you'll, you'll see. But yeah, that's really fun about tea. So yeah, this one doesn't have jasmine in it, but it's infused. My friend likes to make the joke that this is not the jasmine that's found in Morocco. <laughs> Cheap joke in my opinion. But anyway, so we've got this one here and this is also a loose tea is worth mentioning. Loose teas, you're gonna need one of the strainers that you can buy. You, you don't wanna just put tea leaves and stir it. Yeah, it is gross. Yeah, we've all been there. We've all made that mistake. But yes, I don't believe we have this one in bag form, but if you wanna feel a bit fancy, we've got nice tins that have got twinings on. They look beautiful, wherever they go. Okay, and we're just going to turn around and this is our next green tea. This is the pomegranate, raspberry and strawberry green tea. This one was kind of created for the consumers. They said, we want, we want this tea that's going to be fruity, fresh, and it's going to be delicious. And Twine's like, okay, here you go. Now, this one is really, 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 really good iced. I've actually not tried this one hot yet because it is so good iced. Because it's very naturally sweet from the berries, it doesn't really need any extra sweeteners added to it either. And also because green tea does contain the Camellia sinensis, it is caffeinated still, which I think some people get a bit confused between green and herbal, but green teas do contain caffeine unless it states otherwise. So this one's really good. You're gonna get your caffeine kick, but you're gonna have something that's very fresh. 
And so yeah, this one's really good for the summer. So moving on from green tea to herbal teas. And like I said before, herbal teas, they're not actually tea because they don't contain any of the previous fermented plant. So therefore these are great to have at all times of the day. And because they don't contain the tea leaves, you can do anything you want with green tea. You can put anything in it, no herbal teas. No, I'm getting confused. Herbal teas, you can add flowers, spices, herbs, anything you want. The first one we've got here is the pomegranate and raspberry. So similar flavors to the one we just spoke about around the corner, but this one has got licorice and chicory root in it. Chicory root is really fun. That one tastes quite nutty. It's used in cooking quite a lot, and it's a really rich flavor. This one I know is probably the fan favorite from all the other guys that do the tea tours. Everybody seems to love this tea. It's a really fun, bright, vibrant red, pink color, and it's really delicious. Yeah, again, very, very sweet. So we've got a sweet herbal tea, and then on this side, we've got one that's a little bit more spicy. So this is the orange and cinnamon spice herbal tea. This one has got a base of rooibos. Does anyone know what rooibos is? Or what it translates to? No? So rooibos is, oh, Alice knows. Good, I'm glad you know. Thank you for being here. So rooibos is a direct translation to redbush. So redbush is a very, very red tea. Now, another thing that I would normally say, don't add milk to herbal teas, but I have had rooibos teas and I do choose to add milk to them. So this one is really interesting. So the, you would think with it having cinnamon in it, it would be really overpoweringly strong. But cinnamon that is in this one is blended with the orange, which is orange peel and zest. So if you, anybody, do we have any bakers here? We'll know when you add zest and peel of oranges, it's gonna really pack a punch. So for that reason, this one's really well balanced and it's really delicious. This one would be kind of more of a seasonal choice for me. Again, you guys do pumpkin, we do cinnamon in autumn. Really, really tasty. But I've also heard that this one's good iced as well. And probably for this reason, this is probably one of the most popular teas we sell because we seem to nearly always be out of stock of it. So if it's in there and you see it, I would probably grab a box because, I mean, the sales save for themselves. People know what they're buying and what they're enjoying. Okay, so we're gonna just move around the corner, past my fucking stuff in the window. Anybody want to take a guess as to what the other flavour in this tea is along with the peppermint? <laughs> yeah, you'll have to in the trick question. <laughs> so this has got my favourite thing in it, it's got vanilla in it. So this was named after we have hard candies at home that are called bus mints. So this is where this gets its name from. And also because Twines like to make a joke about it being so smooth, it's like butter. I think that's a terrible pun, but you know, who am I to guess? Engaged. So butter mint is actually a really interesting tea because I love peppermint tea but sometimes it's a bit harsh and a bit strong this one is really mellow it's really sweet it's really delicious and this is probably my favorite tea on the tour that we've got here specifically herbal teas anyway me and Alice drink this all the time at home this is probably the one that we we consume the most of and I know this one is also a fan favorite with the lions at Animal Kingdom they give them peppermint for enrichment and they love it so if it's good enough for the lions it's probably good enough for us and Another thing, sometimes when we're out of buttermint and you see, if you look in all of the other teas on the shelf, there is a tea called peppermint cheer. And that is the exact same tea that they made for Christmas that they just stuck a few snowflakes on. So if we don't have one, grab the other. I promise they are exactly the same. And it's just, this one's really great all year round. You know, peppermint we have is like candy canes and things for Christmas. But like I say, I do enjoy peppermint all the time. Now, when I drink a peppermint tea, it would probably be because I don't want something heavy as black tea, or I just want something that's a bit fresher. And also because it really helps make you feel a bit like you've got digestion being cleared out, and if you've got a sore throat, you don't want to be having things that's got milk in it. This kind of leads on to our next teas, because teas used to be used for medicinal purposes when they first were created, because they were used to kind of treat and cure ailments before you could go see a doctor and get some antibiotics or anything like that. So this is our Super Blend Soothing Turmeric Herbal Tea. Now this is part of our health range and there's a whole shelf of other herbal teas that are in this same collection. We've got ones to help you sleep, ones that are good for your heart, ones that are good for energizing. We don't need to give Alice any more caffeine or any more energy. But yeah, there is a tea specifically for that. <laughs> so this one, if you've ever tried turmeric before, you'll know that it is a very vibrant and bright color. It's got a very distinctive taste. 
but this is blended with, uh, I think this one's got star anise in it, yes. So this kind of a weird licorice taste, but it's actually surprisingly delicious. I know a few people that drink this just because they like the taste of it, not because it has got medicinal purposes. But this one, turmeric, is really good for digestion. So people like to say that you have a cup of this before dinner, and then you have a cup of peppermint cheer after dinner. So kind of, that's kind of how we word that one. But I have not tried this one yet, but with all the rich food that we consume here, I think I'm gonna to need to start introducing it because <laughs> food here is a lot. <laughs> so this is our 10th pesky, and these are our last two just here. If you guys want a bit of shade, feel free to stand over there or there's a little bit here. I know it's very hot outside. So there's these two here, kind of for your guys brief because back at home we don't really drink iced tea nearly all the tea we consume is hot whereas here it's the complete opposite i think someone told me it's 80 percent of tea consumed here is iced or cold which if you told people back home they would be scandalized so this yeah this one here is really interesting because this is actually also technically not tea so this is cold infused so this is going to take flavors of like berries and flowers and it's going to infuse the water so these, you get like a really cute little tea bag, but they come in a jar, not a traditional box. And you just throw them in with a water bottle and you just don't need to do anything with them. I drink mine with the bag still in there. And I just leave it and you can top it up and it's just gonna make the water taste a bit more exciting because you know, we all need to make sure we're getting our water, especially when it's hot and we're approaching the summer months. This one's really, really, really good for that. I always have like a, a tube of it in my handbag at all times, just in case I want something bit more exciting so this one that we've got here is the mango and passion fruit my personal favorite is the watermelon and mint and alice what's yours yours is the pineapple and coconut yes pina colada exactly pina colada without the fun as we like to say but you know i would not recommend adding the fun to water <laughs> save that for something else okay so because this one is a cold infuse it does not contain any caffeine that's why this one is also really good to give to any young children that haven't tried tea yet as kind of like an introduction to the flavors. But yeah, this one's really, really, really delicious. And then this one that I've got here is our cold brewed mixed berries black tea. Now, because this is a black tea, it does contain caffeine because it has got the Camellia sinensis in it. Now it's worth noting, you can make any tea cold, you can brew it cold, but it's gonna take a lot longer if you're just putting cold tea, like cold water on a normal tea bag. But this one here was specifically created to be created with cold water. So you just do it with cold water like you would do hot with a normal tea so it's really easy no fuss involved and it, we do also do a collection of these ones too there's a a green one that has got mint in it there's a peach tea and there's a classic english breakfast but yeah my personal favorite is the mixed berries one because it has got black currant in it has anybody tried black currant yes you've got it we're, we're cheering for black currant in this corner it's not such a popular popular flavor over here as it is back home Someone told me that it used to be illegal to consume or grow blackcurrant here, which is wild to me because we have it in everything back home. Jams, jellies, desserts, and we also do a juice that we call squash back home, and it's just kind of like a diluted juice that you add water to, and it's super delicious. But yeah, this tea is still going to give you your caffeine fix, but it's going to be super quick and easy for a hot day like today, so you don't need to prepare it ahead of time. So a really good suggestion if you live somewhere that is hot like here so yeah this is our final tea on the tour everything that we have got in stock that's in the garden will be in the tea caddy is it all in a certain place still or is it all kind of been blended hide and seek, hide and seek. <laughs> it is it's like a game <laughs> so yeah thank you so much for joining us today for the tour i know it's been hot thank you for listening to me ramble on if on your way out you just give Alice your little tags that you've got, she's going to give you some samples, like a little fairy at the back with all the gifts. So yeah, thank you so much guys, hope you have a really great day and go and enjoy the festival. Thank you so much. Cool.